Hi guys, uh, this is Dr. G here and in this video we will specifically talk about measured numbers and uh, significant figures. So basically measured numbers are readings that you take out from an analytical instrument. Okay, so you basically use an analytical device, uh, something like a ruler, okay, which is a very basic analytical device uh, to obtain uh, a an entity or a quantity such as length okay so to obtain this a measured number in this case the length of a stick okay you use the markings or marked lines at the end of a ruler right so basically usually in a measured number last digit is going to be an estimate last digit is going to be an estimate so when you are giving a reading using a scientific device okay you should always try to make an estimate and that estimate will be the very last uh, digit uh, of your uh, uh, measurement okay very last digit of your measurement so in this case let's say if i ask you the uh, length of this particular stick you might say it is a uh, 4.5 right you someone might say that it is 4.5 someone might say it is 4.4 or 4.6 but i mean a logical answer to the reading would be 4.5 right so why did you say that you obviously know that this a particular uh, uh, stick is actually longer than four centimeters but less than five centimeters so you know for a fact that it is longer than four centimeters right you know that it is longer than four centimeters and it seems like it is between uh, four centimeters and five centimeters and it is uh, quite halfway right so if it is halfway through four uh, four and five centimeters it should be 4.5 centimeters so in this reading this very last digit is an estimate okay is an estimate so this 4.5 reading is known as a measured number measured number to obtain this measured number we used a scientific instrument and also the last digit is actually an estimate an estimate all right so measured numbers are numbers obtained when you measure a quantity such as your height weight or temperature using an using a scientific device okay and then of course uh, to write a, write a measured number, you follow three uh, three things. You observe the numerical values of marked lines, and then uh, once you uh, figure out the uh, numerical values of the marked lines, you you try to give an estimate uh, for the numbers between the marks. Okay, and then the estimated number will be the final measured number. Very straightforward, right? So here is here is a nice example. Okay, I have. Uh, three different scenarios in this case a b and c so we are trying to measure the length of a stick using three different rulers so you can say two different rulers okay in in example a in example a as you can see the the length of the piece of wood is between four four and five centimeters so we know that it is more than four centimeters it is more than four centimeters and then our estimate will be that uh, it is actually between 4 and 5 so halfway through 4 and 5 so it will be 0. 0.5 so this will be 4.5 centimeters so that is a that is a for b uh, the ruler is a little bit more calibrated okay the ruler is more calibrated why did i say that because i mean it has more calibrated lines right so if you take uh, 2 centimeters like you know second i mean two centimeter and three centimeter markings as you can see you have 10 smaller calibration lines between two and three you have 10 smaller calibration lines between uh, uh, two and three so if you want to know uh, how much this uh, length between two two smaller calibration lines what you do is you take the larger i mean uh, numbered measurement which is one centimeter so the difference between the two numerical values 2 and 3 is 1 centimeter and then that 1 centimeter is divided into 10 smaller calibration lines right 10 smaller calibration lines so 
each of these two smaller calibration lines are worth 0.1 centimeter 0.1 centimeter okay so basically between here to here okay that is 0.1 centimeter all right so keeping that in mind let's see the length of this particular piece of wood uh, as you can see it is clearly uh, going past 4.5 but it is less than 4.6 so now we have to make an estimate for the last i mean 4.5 is the reading that you got directly from the lines right but we know that it is slightly more than 4.5 and it seems like it is in between 4.5 and 4.6 so a uh, an estimate would be 4.55 okay 4.55 centimeters right so the estimated value is right here this is your estimate this is your estimate all right so let's take a look at the third example in here you have a, a little piece of wood okay and then you are trying to get the get the length and it seems like the length of the uh, piece of wood is three centimeters okay three centimeters but here's the thing you i mean it seems like this piece of wood falls right on the three centimeter line uh, so therefore we didn't make any estimate right so your estimate would be what the piece of wood actually uh, falls right on that uh, three centimeter reading so therefore we have to put this zero at the end this zero is your estimate this zero right here is your estimate why because you estimated that the wood is going to fall exactly on the three centimeter line okay that is your estimate so as you can see when you are making a making a measured uh, number or you, when you are writing a measured number okay you always use an estimate and that estimate will be the last uh, the very last um, uh, number okay very last number so let's take another example let's take another example okay here let's say we have a volumetric flask okay this right here is a volumetric flask or piece of a volumetric flask and then this volumetric flask is uh, calibrated in uh, uh, into cubic centimeters okay let's say this is eight milliliters this is nine milliliters okay remember so this is calibrated into milliliters okay and of course that is the same as cubic centimeters okay one cubic centimeter is the same as one milliliter and then not only that this is also calibrated into like 10 smaller calibration lines okay each milliliter is calibrated into uh, 10 smaller calibration lines so what is the volume what is the minimum reading for this or what is the volume between these two smaller calibration lines so you know that uh, it is one tenth of a millimeter right one tenth of a milliliter how do you know that because uh, you take the calibrated numbers 9 and 10 and between 9 and 10 you have 10 uh, smaller calibration lines so this will be your smaller reading okay which is 0.1 uh, milliliter or cubic centimeter okay so let's say uh, let's say that you are you are getting a reading from this okay so usually when liquid is present in a, in a smaller narrow tube okay usually it 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 makes this downward uh, curve thing okay we call it the meniscus okay so the actual reading is actually the bottom of the meniscus okay so you try to uh, get the bottom of the meniscus as the actual reading okay so what would be the reading here so you know that it is beyond 8.6 okay you know that it is between 8.6 and 8.7 uh, and then our estimate will be that it is in between so let's put 5 here okay Five here so it will be 8.65 cubic centimeters 8.65 cubic centimeters I mean uh, in science we don't try to be too cute okay we don't want to uh, say that it is 8.66 or 8.64 I mean th there are so many errors when you try to 
uh, take uh, very accurate estimates like this. So usually what we do is we will either estimate the value to be exactly, which will, we will basically estimate the value to be exactly on, uh, on the line. So the last estimated value will be zero, okay? Or it will be halfway, it will be halfway. So it will be five, okay? So usually uh, when you are making an estimate, okay, try to stick to zero or five, okay? Uh, that helps, I mean, that makes your life easy, okay? Otherwise, you know, when two people are measuring the same thing, they might have two different uh, readings and then it could introduce errors, okay? So if, if the, if the, if the, uh, measurement falls exactly on a certain reading so you will put a zero okay but if it is in between okay if it is in between then you will put a five okay this is how you do it this is how you do it when you are making a measured number all right so with that we will start talking about significant figures actually this is the uh, this is the uh, more important discussion out of the two discussions that we are going to uh, do today. Okay, we already talked about how to get a measured number. But here's the thing, in a measured number, uh, you know that uh, uh, the very last digit is an estimated digit, digit, right? So you know that it is an estimated digit. So basically, uh, uh, in a measured number, all the digits including the estimated digit are significant figures okay in a measured number all the digits including the estimated digit are known as significant figures okay so basically why do we need these significant figures significant figures are very important to represent the amount of error okay so basically when you are making a uh, when you are making a measured uh, number or when you are reading a measured number, okay, uh, you, the use of significant figures basically uh, uh, represent the amount of error, okay? And uh, there are some rules that we could use to figure out the significant figures and non-significant or you can say insignificant figures, okay? So, uh, to identify the significant figures in a measured number, we could follow this particular table, okay? So if I have to point to you a single slide that is extremely important in this video, it will be this slide, okay? This is directly from your textbook. This is directly from your textbook. And this slide basically tells you, this slide basically tells you the rules that we will use to figure out the significant figures in a measured number. So study this slide and you will be golden, okay? You will be golden. So in here, uh, we, ha we basically have two main rules, okay? Rule number one and rule number two. Okay, rule number one and rule number two. So basically rule number one, rule number one, uh, is associated with significant figures, okay? So rule number one tells you about the significant figures, okay? Rule number one, discuss the significant figures. So therefore, rule number two talks about not significant figures, okay? Not significant figures. So let's talk about rule number one first, okay? According to rule number one, uh, any non-zero value will be a significant figure. Okay, in, in a measured reading, in a measured uh, number, in a measured number, any non-zero, that means one through nine, okay, any non-zero value will be significant. Okay, as an example, in a 4.5 gram reading, okay, both four and five will be significant. Both four and five will be significant. Why? Because they are, they're both, uh, they're both non-zeros and in here one is significant, two is significant, two is significant, three and five is significant. So basically all the numbers that you see in 122.35 are significant. Why? Because they are all non-zeros and in 4.5 grams you have two significant figures in total. You have two significant figures in total. Okay. Why? Because both four, four and five are significant and in 122.35 you have five significant figures in total okay so that is how you do this so anytime whenever you have a non-zero 
number non zero number that number is significant okay and uh, uh, then let's talk about rule number 1b okay it talks about zeros between non zero digits zeros between non zero digits okay so uh, if you are a zero okay if you are a zero uh, rule number 1a says that you could be a non significant uh, number right because zeros could be non significant but if you are a zero and if you want to be significant what you should do is you should insert yourself in between two non zero digits i mean it's like high school okay let's say in high school you have a, a popular group and a non not so popular group okay one person decides that you know i want to be popular i don't want to stay in this non popular group right so the easiest way for you to make yourself popular or let's say in this case significant is to figure out a way to jump it jump in between the popular people right popular people so when the moment that you are in between the popular crowd or in here the uh, significant uh, non zeros then you immediately become significant you immediately become significant so look at this zero right here look at this zero so this zero is between 2 and 5 so that zero is significant and then uh, uh, the two zeros that you have in 5.008 okay both zeros that you have in the middle are between non zero digits 5 and 8 so therefore both those zeros are significant so you basically have three uh, significant figures for 205 all three uh, digits are significant to 0 and 5 and 5.008 in here 5 and 8 are of course significant and the two zeros are also significant because they are in between uh, two non zero digits so therefore you have a total of four significant figures you have a total of four significant figures okay uh, by the way decimal point doesn't really matter okay in in this rule number 1b okay but in rule number 1c decimal point matters okay why because it talks about decimal numbers decimal numbers decimal numbers are basically the numbers with a decimal point okay do you see this dot okay so whenever you have a dot that means it's a decimal decimal number right so when you take a decimal number okay the tailing zeros or we call them Uh, zeros that are at the end okay in a decimal number tailing zeros are significant in a in a decimal number tailing zeros are significant those zeros could be before or after the decimal point it doesn't really matter okay in a decimal number any tailing zeros are counted as significant uh, figures okay so in 50 50 point this zero is significant in 25.0 this zero is significant in 16.00 both these two zeros are significant so therefore as you can see in the first measured number you have two significant figures in the third one in the second one you have three significant figures in 16.00 you have four significant figures okay you have four significant figures all right and then uh, rule number 1d okay rule number 1d talks about scientific notation if you remember what is scientific notation it basically has a, a number okay let's say x a decimal number usually okay x point uh, y z let's say this is a decimal sorry this is a decimal number okay but in scientific notation you have a decimal number times 10 to the power some some value okay this whole thing together we call it uh, scientific notation this you call it scientific notation you call it scientific notation in a scientific notation uh, you basically have the coefficient this this area right here we call it the coefficient and a 10 to the power something okay 10 to the power value so honestly or the truth is you use science i mean scientific notation to identify significant figures so so the the use of the use of scientific notation is to identify the significant figures so any number you have in this coefficient 
area any number you have in this coefficient area is a significant figure is a significant figure it doesn't matter whether it's a zero or not i mean if it is a zero at the front or zero at the back it doesn't really matter okay any number that you have uh, in the coefficient part of the significant notation is known as a significant figure as a significant figure so let's talk about an example okay i have two examples here 4.8 times 10 to the power 5 so in here the coefficient is right here so both numbers that you have in the coefficient are considered significant and in 5.70 times 10 to the power minus 3 this right here is the coefficient and here any number that you have in this um, uh, coefficient is significant so you have a total of three significant figures in this scientific notation all right so of course uh, then let's talk about rule number two rule number two, two talks about zeros rule number two talks about zeros that are not significant okay so uh, basically the zeros that we did not talk about before okay so the zeros that we did not talk about are uh fronting zeros or the zeros that you have in a decimal number and those zeros are actually if if they're at, in the beginning of the decimal number okay if the zeros are in the beginning at the beginning of the decimal number those zeros are not significant okay so none of these zeros are significant so only four is significant that is why you only have one significant figure okay so any fronting zeros in a decimal number are insignificant and uh, the second uh, part of this rule is that uh, the tailing zeros on a very large number okay if you have a very large number that is not a decimal point which means it is not a decimal number so in a non-decimal number in a non-decimal number any tailing zeros any tailing zeros are insignificant are insignificant we use those zeros just to uh, write the size of the number i mean you couldn't uh, write large numbers without these uh, zeros okay so even though you use them they don't have to be significant okay they don't have to be significant so according according to this uh, uh, rule okay any any tailing zeros in a non-decimal number are known as uh, are known as insignificant or non-significant zeros okay that is all you need to remember this is all the rules that you need to remember okay so uh, let's quickly go through it once again so non-zero uh, values are always significant and then if you are a zero you have a few ways to become significant one way is to go between two non-zero digits another way is to be a, a tailing zero that means a zero at the end of a decimal number and then the other way is to uh, uh, is uh, for a zero to become significant is to be present in a decimal sorry be present in the coefficient of a, of the scientific notation if you are within the coefficient of a scientific notation you are definitely going to be significant you are de definitely going to be significant that is actually why we use uh, scientific notation okay that is why we use scientific notation so let's say you know uh, you have a reading called 300 okay you measured something and then the the value of your measured number is 300 okay if you just report it as 300 of course you only have one significant figure you only have one significant figure and then the two tailing zeros the two tailing zeros will be insignificant because zeros that are at the end of a non-decimal number okay uh, they are they are they are called insignificant rule number 2b rule number 2b okay so both these zeros are insignificant so you only have one significant figure but let's say you made the reading and you know for a fact that uh, this zero is significant because let's say that that is your estimated digit okay so you know that that zero is significant even though it's zero so uh, how do you record it i mean how do you report it you write it in the coefficient of a scientific notation okay so you can write 300 you can basically write 300 as 3.0 times 10 to the power 2 that is 300 right but 
once you write 300 in this scientific notation in this scientific notation this zero immediately becomes significant why because it, it is in the coefficient of in the coefficient of uh, a scientific notation okay so that is why you need a scientific notation okay i hope you understand it okay so one more example let's say you have 840,000 okay and then you know that these in in here okay you only have 8 and 4 are as significant figures why because they are the only non zero digits so all these four zeros are insignificant if you write it like this but let's say you want to uh, make sure that the audience know that these two first zeros are significant if you want to include these two zeros as significant figures what you could do is you can write the scientific notation you can write 8.400 times 10 to the power 5 if you write the same uh, number using the scientific notation anything that you have in the coefficient part of the scientific notation are significant so if you want to include any of these zeros as significant figures the best way to do it is to use scientific notation i hope that you understand it now very clearly okay all right so let's go to the next slide so um, so in here i'm i'm, I'm basically giving you more uh, information on the scientific notation okay so whenever you have one or more zeros in a large number that are significant you can use scientific notation just like i explained before so i have another example here so if you want you can post the video and read this but it, but this is the same exact detail that i just explained okay that i just explained and here i have given you some more examples okay so you can uh, try to uh, check whether you can understand this by yourself because we already talked about it okay all right so in here i have a sample problem what i want you to do is i want you to pause the video and see if you could do this by yourself okay uh all right so let's talk about a uh, what you need to do here is identify the significant zeros in each of the following measured numbers so we just have to identify the significant zeros in a uh, you have 0 0.000250 meters as a measured number. So in here, this is a decimal number, of course. And in a decimal number, any zeros at the back are significant. So you have one uh, significant zero. Okay, you have one significant zero. Okay, you have one significant zero, which is this one. And you also have a total of three significant figures. Two, five, and zero are all significant. And in 70.040, okay, in 70.040, which is a decimal number, uh, all zeros are significant. Why? Because the zero at the end is a tailing zero, so that is significant. And, oh, excuse me. Uh, the, the two zeros in the middle are also significant. Why? Because... Uh, because they are in between two non-zero digits. So all three zeros that you see here are significant. So you have a total of five significant figures. In here in C you have a large number. And in a large number, uh, all the placeholder zeros are not significant. They are not significant. But this zero right here is significant in the middle of one and two. Okay, so you have a total of you have excuse me you have a total of three significant figures in here okay all right so let me give you the official answer which is basically the same as what i just mentioned to you okay if you want you can pause the video and write it down but of course i think you got it so in study check 1.1 try to pause the video and try it before i explain it okay identify the significant zeros in each of the following measured number you have a decimal number 0 0.04008 uh, so only significant zeros that i see in here are the zeros between 4 and 8 and uh, in b it's it's in scientific notation so any zero that you have in here should be significant so 
both zeros are significant so in b you have a total of three significant figures in a you have a total of four significant figures all right so that is how we do it that is how we do it all right so uh, up until now we talked about uh, measured numbers and the other number that we have is non-measured or we call it exact numbers okay so these exact numbers are not measured so uh, we don't so we don't have to worry about significant figures okay we don't have to worry about significant figures so basically these exact numbers do not affect uh, the number of significant figures in a calculated answer okay so example for these exact exact numbers the most uh, common ones are defined equalities like you know one liter is thousand milliliters or one kilogram is thousand grams one feet is 12 inches so these are definitions by definitions these are exact right so we know that one feet is 12 inches it is not 11.9 it is not 12.1 it is an exact number so uh, we don't worry about significant figures in here and let's say you know if someone tells you i have eight cookies that is an exact number okay that is an exact number dozen of eggs 12 so those are exact numbers we don't worry about significant figures in them okay so that is something important to know so in this study check i want you to identify the numbers as measured or exact all right so quickly do this before i explain it so in three coins okay in here you know it, it looks like it's an exact number okay it's an exact number the diameter of a circle in 7.902 centimeters that one is a measured number that one is a measured number and it has four significant figures and in c we have a definition one number is 60 minutes so all the numbers that you have here are exact numbers so therefore we don't worry about significant figures we don't worry about significant figures so a and c are exact and b is a measured number and then of course i'm pretty sure you are familiar with rules of rounding off okay and uh, if you don't remember what is what are the rules of round, rounding off just read this slide but basically uh, we uh, we usually use this rules of rounding rounding off in association with significant figures okay so uh, if you are not comfortable in rounding off uh, numbers please take a look at this slide but i'm not going to explain it because it is very easy okay all right but uh, here here is an example of the use of uh, significant figures and rounding off okay so let's say uh, in in this table i have three measured numbers i have three measured numbers and then uh, what i want you to do is i want you to uh, rewrite this these numbers rewrite these numbers using either three significant figures using either three significant figures or two significant figures okay uh, so you have to rewrite it using either two significant figures or three significant figures so 8.4234 all the numbers that you see here are significant but you want to round it off by from three significant figures so this right here is the three significant figures okay and after two you have three so you basically don't do anything to two and you keep 8.42 and drop three three and four if you want to uh, round it off at two significant figures okay if you want to round it off at two significant figures okay you have to cut it off after four and once again after four you have a two so it doesn't do anything to four so you keep 8.4 and drop two three and four all right so let's take a look at the second number let's take a look at the second number in here i have uh, 14.780 once again in here all the numbers are significant okay and then if you round it off after three significant figures you are going to round it off after seven and after seven you have eight which is five or more right so if it is five or more you add one to seven you add one to seven so it becomes eight so it is 14.8 okay 
and then if you want to round it off after three i mean two significant figures you are rounding off after 14 after 14 so you have seven after 14 so you will add one to four so it will become five so it will be 15 okay very straightforward and then uh, the last number that we that I, that i have is uh, 3256 3256 so you are trying to uh, round it off after five okay you are going to round it off from five so you have six after five so you have to add one so five becomes six okay so it will be three thousand two hundred sixty okay sixty okay so but by the way don't drop the zero okay if you drop the zero it will be uh, 326 and it has no relationship to the original number so you simply uh, use only three significant figures and after that everything will be zeros in this large number so if you do the same for two significant figures which means you are rounding off after two you are rounding off after two so you have a five which means it will add one to number two so it will be 3200 i'm sorry 3300 3300 okay use the two zeros as placeholders that is very important okay that is very important all right, keeping these things in mind, let's try this uh, sample problem, okay? You might want to pause the video and try it. I'm going to pause the, uh, pause the answers in a second, okay? All right, so I'm not going to explain the answers in much more detail. I'm going to just give you the solution, okay? So you can take a look at the solution and then pause the video if you feel like you got the wrong answer, okay? And I also have another study check 2.3, okay? So in here, what you do is you will basically round off each of the numbers in sample problem 2.3 uh, using two significant figures, using two significant figures, all right? Okay. So if you do that, if you do that, A will be what? A will be 35, okay? 35. And what will be B? Huh? What will be B? It will be 0 0.0026. Okay. And then C will be uh, 3.8 times 10 to the power 3. Okay. So these will be the answers. Okay. Check your answers. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now we are going to uh, get into multiplication and division of measured numbers, okay, uh, using significant figures. This part is very important, okay, because in, in chemistry or in sciences, we are always going to multiply or divide or add or subtract measured numbers all the time. So this part is extremely important because if you don't know this, you can't use significant figures. Even though you know what are significant figures, you're not going to use them in science. Okay, so in multiplication and division, uh, you treat both of them similarly, both multiplication and division uh, and uh, significant figures are similar. Okay, so what you do is when you are multiplying or dividing uh, measured numbers, you figure out the uh, fewest significant figures. Okay, so in here you have two numbers, two measured numbers. This is, this is the first measured number and here is the second measured number. Okay, and then you realize that in the second measured number in B, you have only two significant figures. You only have two significant figures, right guys? So, uh, in here you have four, four significant figures. In here you have two significant figures. So, the lowest amount of significant figures are two. And then, once you figure this one out, you do the calculation using a calculator. But what you do is you will round it off. You will round it off after two significant figures you will round it off after two significant figures okay that is how you do it that is how you do it so the answer will be 8.6 cubic centimeters okay all right so keeping that in mind uh let's go to addition and subtraction here's the thing good thing about addition and subtraction in addition and subtraction we we don't really worry about uh, uh uh, significant figures in addition and subtraction we don't really worry about significant figures instead we worry about the fewest decimal places 
So when you're adding three measured numbers in this example, okay, and uh, uh, in, in this example, third number, which is this one, has the fewest decimal places. So uh, the answer that you get from your calculator, you will basically match the number of decimal places. You will basically match the number of decimal places uh, to the fewest decimal places. Okay, so uh, usually we don't worry about significant figures when adding or subtracting uh, measured numbers using significant figures. Okay, uh, sometimes significant figures could matter in addition and subtraction, especially if you have large numbers like you know numbers with uh, placeholder zeros. It could matter. Okay, I will post a couple of examples in your quizzes so that you can practice these things. But usually you don't really worry about significant figures when you are adding or subtracting uh, measured numbers using significant figures. The other important thing is that if you have exact numbers in addition, subtraction, or uh, even in multiplication or division, okay? So if you have exact numbers, you don't worry about them. You don't try to count their significant figures, okay? Uh, you only worry about the significant figures of the measured numbers. So your final answer, will have significant figures from your uh, from your measured numbers and you basically ignore the exact numbers because we don't worry about the significant figures for exact numbers i hope it is clear and i have a few sample problems uh, uh, in this uh, lecture note okay so let's quickly see if you could do them okay try to do it by yourself okay and in here what what i want you to do is i want you to uh, do the calculation and then uh, uh, round off the calculator display uh, depending on the significant figures, okay? All right, so pause the video and see if you could do it. The first thing that we have is 56.8 multiplied by, multiplied by 0.37, okay? So the calculator display that I got is 21.016. Okay, zero one six, but of course, uh, this is not the correct answer. You have to worry about significant figures. In here, you have three. In this number, you have two significant figures. So of course, you will round this number after twenty one. So the final answer will be twenty one. Final answer will be twenty one. Okay, in B, you have four measured numbers. Let's figure out the significant figures for each number. First one has four significant figures. Second number has three significant figures. Third measured number has three. Fourth number has two significant figures. So your final answer should only have two significant figures. Okay. Uh, you can try this calculation quickly. Okay. I don't want to waste your time on putting these numbers on my calculator and then giving you an answer. Simply get the calculator display and round off after two significant figures. Third, you have 25.0 divided by 5. In here, both numbers have... Uh, three significant figures each so 25 divided by 5 which will be 5 but it needs to have three significant figures so don't forget to add the two zeros that is important okay so the correct answer will be 5.00 your final answer should also have three significant figures 5.00 why three significant figures because you know in uh, division and multiplication you match the lowest uh, significant figures so in here the lowest amount of significant figures is three that is why we have to write 5.00 not just five okay all right so i hope you understand this okay you got this and uh, you will use these uh, techniques that we learned uh, in measured numbers and significant figures plenty of times uh, when we are doing calculations in chemistry okay and i have a few more uh, few more uh, study checks for you guys to try at home okay try them by yourself and if you have any questions come and talk to me there is another sample for problem uh, from addition and subtraction okay so post the video and then try them okay and uh, here are the solutions okay for a the answer is 151 milliliters and for b the answer is 138.43 grams okay all right, guys, with that, I'm going to conclude this video. Just let me know if you have any questions, okay? You guys have a good one. Take care.